Bode plots are two graphs. One is the magnitude graph and the other is the phase or the angle graph. And we plot both of these graphs versus the frequency of the system. So whenever we talk about Bode plot, we are talking about frequency, magnitude and the phase. So these are the three things which we are concerned in Bode plot. So before we talk about how to plot Bode plots, I want to give you a background information why these three things are important and what is the relationship which we are trying to see in our Bode plots. So the reason we are interested in Bode plots I will explain in a minute but first there are few things you should understand. Number one is whenever we are talking about frequency response we are talking about the steady state state of the system. It means the transient has been died out or the real term of the transfer function has been vanished and only the imaginary part is there. So therefore we sometime put as you know that we put s is equal to j omega in the transfer function. So for example this is any system which has a transfer function gs so we put s is equal to j omega. But this we will talk in a minute. First thing I want to make you understand is that whenever we apply a sine wave to a system or a sinusoidal input to a system the output is also sinusoidal number one. The number two is the frequency of the system at the output will stay the same. So for example my frequency was 6 radians per second. I will get the same frequency at the output but the amplitude and phase will change. So what is amplitude? Amplitude is basically the distance of the peak from the origin. So this is peak and this is origin. So the distance here is 2 and at the output I am getting 3. So it means the amplitude is being multiplied by a factor 1.5 and these are the actual sine waves which I got from plotting these values which I have mentioned here so that you can also test this by plotting these sine waves either in MATLAB or in Scilab software. I use Scilab which is a free alternative of MATLAB and now what is phase? Phase is the distance of any corresponding point from the y axis. So this is y axis you can take uh, peak as the, your reference point and then you can uh, measure the distance of this peak and the other peak. For example this peak is already on at the origin so there is no difference here but this peak has a certain phase, a certain angle shift. Now it means the phase and amplitude will change but the frequency will stay the same. But this change, change in phase and change in magnitude is different for every frequency. For example, if the frequency is 6 and the system changes magnitude by 1.5 times, if the frequency goes to 600, the change will be different. Therefore, we want to see the change in magnitude and phase for a very large range of frequency so that we can be sure that over a very long range of frequency our system is stable. So we want to see this change in phase and magnitude from omega is equal to 0 up to omega is equal to infinite or very high. So we want to see this change for a range of frequency. So therefore we use Bode plot. So on the x axis of Bode plot we have frequency, on the y axis of Bode plot we have magnitude and then phase. So this is the relationship which we study in Bode plot. So here you can see more clearly when I plot uh, both input and output sine waves on the same plot. So you can see the uh, change in phase and the change in magnitude. Uh, three things to note once again frequency is same, amplitude has changed and phase has shifted. Now let's talk about uh, mathematics of frequency response. This is open loop transfer function gs and in order to get the frequency response of this system we have to put s is equal to j omega and when we put s is equal to j omega then we can actually represent this complex number in the form of a magnitude and an angle. So m is the magnitude of this complex number and phi is the angle. The magnitude is also called amplitude as I mentioned earlier and the angle is also called phase. So you can use any of these terminology. So in body plot we will be plotting this m and phi versus the frequency of the system. Now any complex number can be plotted in at least two ways. 
First, I would like to uh, highlight this second method, which is the normal uh, polar plot, where you uh, plot uh, a length and an angle. Then we can also plot this uh, complex number by plotting frequency against the magnitude and also frequency against the phase. So in this way, we will get two graphs, one for the magnitude and one for the phase. And when we plot in this way, it is called Bode plot. So in Bode plots, we get two graphs. As I mentioned earlier that the response of the system changes with the frequency. For every frequency, the change in M and the change in phase is different. So therefore, we want to include a long range of frequencies. So from near 0, 10 raised to the power minus 1 is approximately 0, to a very high frequency, 10 raised to the power 4 or even further, we are trying to include the omega values from 0 up to a very large or we can say infinite values. This is one thing that we want to include a large uh, range of omega values to see the full response of the system and later on we also want to know that our system is not becoming unstable for a very long range of frequencies and therefore we are using a semi-log plot. As you can see here that on the x-axis we have a log scale. And this is the reason for using the log scale that we want to include a wide range of frequencies. On the y-axis, however, we have a normal scale or the linear scale. But instead of plotting the magnitude, we are plotting another factor which is actually 20 log of magnitude. And this is because we want to convert this magnitude into a specific unit which is called dB or the decibels. And this is a traditional way of doing this because this decibel has some relationship with the way we hear sounds. So we want to plot this factor 20 log of magnitude which will be in dB units against the omega. Once you have done few examples of Bode plot, you will understand that which limits I should use. On the x-axis, you always start from 10 raised to the power uh, minus 1, which is 0 0.1, to something 10 raised to the power 3 or 4, or sometimes only 10 raised to the power 2. On the y-axis, however, you might need a uh, larger values of phase. And this we will see when we do examples, and you will understand how you will be able to get an approximate limit of this uh, graph when physically plotting the Bode plot. Before we talk about Bode plot, I want to show you how an actual Bode plot looks. So I have used this code on Scilab to plot a Bode plot of this simple transfer function which has a pole at minus 5. So uh, just briefly I will explain this code. And then I will explain the main thing uh, on the Bode plot. So what I do here is clear a screen and then I make a polynomial in S. Then I define the numerator 1, denominator S plus 5. Then I make a function, numerator divided by denominator. Then I plot Bode plot using Bode function. And in this function, I give the argument H1, which is my function and I give the range of uh, omega. So the lowest range normally we give is 0.1, which is 10 raised to the power minus 1, which is the origin here. So this origin is not exactly 0, but very close to 0. And then I give an approximate uh, range of 50. So this is 10, this is 50, and this is 100. So one important thing here is that you should understand how to read the log scale. For example, 10 raised to the power 0 is 1, so this is 1. So if the line is in the middle, so it means that this value is 5 here. This is not uh, something 7 or 9, this is 5 because this graph is drawn in such a way that it only shows the start value, the, the end value and the middle value. So in a minute I will show you another graph where I have drawn 10 lines in between and that will be more explanatory. But anyways, this is the code I used to draw this Bode plot. The important thing to note here is that the actual Bode plot is a curve. So this is the magnitude Bode plot and this is phase Bode plot. But 
the techniques you are going to learn we are not going to plot this curve we are going to approximate this body plot by these line segments called asymptotes and asymptote is a line which tries to meet the curve but never meets at any finite distance it meets the curve at infinite distance so this uh, line segment is going towards left try to meet the curve this line segment going downwards try to meet this curve but actually never meets at a finite distance so this is basically the concept of asymptotes so we will be drawing these line segments and you should note this because when i say that we will be drawing line segments how to draw a line segment for a line segment we need a starting point we need an end point and we need a slope so if we have these three things we will be able to draw these line segments to approximate the body plot and luckily in scilab we have some function which is called asymp body underscore asymp this function gives us these asymptotic lines so this blue line is coming from this function similarly the pink line in the phase plot is coming from this asymptotic function to draw the approximate body plot and this is what we are going to learn so for example instead of this curve we will be making these two lines by following certain rules which i am going to explain next so similarly for phase plot we will be making three lines so first line will be horizontal line something like this then another approximate line something like this and then finally another horizontal line asymptote in this direction so this is how we will be drawing a phase body plot now here is another example and uh, in this uh, i also use the asymptotic function in scilab but as you can see that the system is unable to find the asymptotic lines in this case so there is some situation where this system sometimes doesn't work so i have this experience and uh, you might also have this so you might ask one question that why we need to get these approximate lines of body plot when we can actually plot the actual curve so one thing you should note here is that you can only plot this body plot using this software if you know the transfer function but what happens if you don't know the transfer function for example you have a black box system in front of you which you know nothing about this is one of your competitors uh, control system and you want to for example steal that system or you want to copy that system you want to reverse engineer that system and you don't know the transfer function you can actually use body plot techniques to find the transfer function these techniques are called system identification techniques or the reverse engineering techniques of control systems i'm not going to uh, go into details but there is some room for learning this body plot techniques to find the stability behavior of the system without knowing the transfer function or even to find the transfer function of an unknown system so this is a, a powerful motivation for you to learn these body plot techniques